Cuphead was inspired by old cartoons like classic Mickey Mouse. So the latter has got to be a good idea for a game, right? Right? Hold on, is this tutorial just a straight ripoff from Cuphead's? Come to think of it, so is the title screen. And the first gun you get is the pea shooter? Come on, man. And what is it with these sound effects? Let me fix that for you. Here's the world map. Uh, let's just get into the first boss fight. What? Why was the Wilhelm scream there? And why is there no original music in this game? As for the battle, so far so good. But here comes the Queen Bee. I got this. Jump. Dash. What? I was nowhere close to that stinger. This game is totally broken. Oh no. She's got a Glock. And it shoots honeybees. It's actually the out of whack hitboxes that I should watch out for. Maybe what I need is a change of character. Oh my goodness. This could be tracings. Well, let's see if Minnie Mouse is any better. I avoided all damage from the second phase by jumping way above the queen. However, it was the third phase that tested my limits with yet again those hitboxes. Thankfully, after 30 minutes of do-overs, I finally dethroned her highness. No death animation, by the way. Just this transition. Oh, and I've unlocked the Beehive Blaster with plagiarized text from Cuphead. Long range with below average damage. It's nice to have a homing gun. Wait a minute! That's Porky Pig from Looney Tunes. He's not public domain yet. And what's Pete doing here? I'm all sorts of confused. All right, now Porky Pig's dropping down mushrooms. This doesn't look like too much trouble. I spoke too soon. 11 minutes later. You know, I really want to say it was skill that got me this far, but to be honest, it's like 90% luck depending on the swine's drop patterns. The other 10% is standing in between the mushrooms. You know who did get unlucky are the heroes who got mind controlled by Ultimus in this video sponsor, Marvel Strike Force. You all know by now that I love turn-based RPGs. And when I found out Spider-Man was the starting character in this game, I dove right into the campaign to save the multiverse. Shortly after, I recruited Gambit and the alien symbiote Venom. My team has continued to expand, but what I'm really working towards are the recently added symbiote versions of Spider-Gwen and the Silver Surfer to make a complete symbiote team. Who are you gonna put on your squad of five? If you scan my QR code, you'll get Nakia, Black Panther, Okoye, M'Baku, and Killmonger all for free. Plus, you should use code cards to receive Gambit, 500 power cores, and 5 premium orbs. You gotta do it now, though, because all that free stuff is only available for 30 days to jumpstart your game. And it's a free way to support my YouTube channel. So click that link in the description or scan my code today. Next up is this flower, and I'm just now noticing that every boss has this very plain platform just floating in the center of the stage. I'm not complaining, though. I'm just thankful this boss so far is a walk in the park. That is until they get dressed up and put on a tutu. They are impossible to hop over without the help of the platform. I won't make that mistake again. I keep watching out for the falling flowers and that dummy thick transformation. Then something happens more often in this level that I cannot explain. The falling flower hitboxes as shown here. Sometimes I don't even have the option of jumping over the flower lady to the other side because of Pete's bombs mixed in with the falling hazards. I was screwed either way. I tried my best to beat it, but I was losing faith. How am I supposed to beat this game? Well, turns out, Flem Bonds found a way to defeat her. Cheat engine. This granted him unlimited HP. I reached out to him. He walked me through it, and now I too have his power. You didn't see anything. Big shout out to Flem Bonds for helping. Go subscribe to his channel and check out his playthrough of this horrendous game. Finally, on to the fourth boss. A chicken that can sporadically grow long legs and walk side to side just like the previous two bosses' first phases. Then it starts pooping eggs similar to the snowbird poopers from Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Thankfully, the falling eggs coming out of this butthole are actually avoidable compared to past encounters. You may be thinking to yourself, shouldn't this boss have come sooner? Well, no. The UFO phase is tough as nails. The game design and patterns were clearly an afterthought in this adventure. I did figure out how to take minimal damage by retreating to the same side two times in a row to dodge the UFO beam. But man, it still was impossible at times. Why do they go on for so long too? Anyhow, I stopped that extraterrestrial and Invasion and am awarded with the egg catapult. It reminds me of the same one they used in Chicken Run. Fire! Fire! 
best part about it, though, is its damage output. Hopefully, this will speed up these fights. Unfortunately, I had to switch back to the Beehive Blaster to land my shots more consistently because this cow, let's call her Esther, all she does is slide to the left, then slide to the right. Slide to the left, slide to the right. I hate this game. Wait a second. Don't give up on this game yet, Andrew. The overworld map is about to expand. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined time to face a camel you gonna do anything camel when he looks at me and i look at him oh jeez here he comes we gotta give this attack pattern a name because i can't just describe every fight by saying they go side to side we'll call it the lazy dev slide and believe it or not this level is totally doable without cheats every single phase of the camel brawl is beatable without hacks just look at me go dodging its green mucus and even the sun's got nothing on me in fact i'm doing the lazy dev slide myself oh shoot i forgot what game i was playing <sighs> i thought we had a perfect run here. The cheats were definitely needed though for the next face-off versus a kangaroo and koala bear flying a plane. Like, what am I supposed to do here? This is chaos. It's anarchy. Now the kangaroo is twirling around like a tornado with a very high quality spin sound. Now it's happening. I have no idea what's going on and no sound advice for how to beat this. Thankfully, I got a boomerang out of that fiasco. Surprisingly, no plagiarism from the roundabout shot. But we do get to witness a terrible use of Richard Strauss's sunrise composition while the lizard performs the easiest lazy dev slide attack to avoid yet. Let's speed this up to see what the dramatic music is building up to. She grew boobs. She's dancing like Azucena from Tekken. And there are hot dogs falling from the sky. Okay, I'ma head out now. Ah, crap. The next level is a bunch of flying owls in hunt of a mouse. Actually, this was easy peasy. All I had to do was dash past them when they flew towards me. Then they got books. I'm not sure how that's helping them. And all of a sudden, the moon laughs and starts spitting cheese. That's not even making a difference. You guys suck at this. Oh, jeez. What's this? Gumby cactus in the 1930s? It dances while doing the lazy dev slide, then elongates its arms. The best part about this battle is it's playable with no absurd hitboxes. Well, for the most part. There are a few hiccups here and there, but overall, it's fine. And of course, right when I say that... That's the end of the Summer World Desert. I wonder what the autumn woods look like. If you were expecting anything at all, you were expecting too much. I did forget to mention I got this new cactus gun from the previous boss, but it sucks. So back to the boomerang it was, and yet another first phase of the lazy dev slide. After that nonsense, the lion samurai begins charging itself by twirling around at a breakneck speed, then unleashes its lunge attacks that are near impossible to dodge. It gets worse when he goes full helicopter mode using his blade as a propeller, then becomes straight up impossible to win without cheats. Was this game not play tested at all? There's literally no way to avoid the ninja stars. I couldn't even give you a ballpark of how much damage I took. Probably at least 50. Contrary to that, Wildcat was not only one monkey doing the lazy dev slide, but also three additional primates in the back dropping barrels. I say contrary because this dance number was surprisingly doable even though I was against four enemies. They kept dropping barrels in the same places while I performed the same dodge over and over again. The bigger one tried to turn the tables with a banana gun, but it was to no avail. Guess who else had a gun? Yup, a dancing bear with no sense of aim as well. Then he evolves into Zeus somehow while piloting a magic tree trunk and still misses a bunch with his lightning bolts. Alright, let's see his final transformation. Is he dead? Is this supposed to be difficult? Why are they doing the lazy dev slide at the end rather than the beginning? Why am I asking these questions? Just give me the lightning rod gun and I'll be on my way. It's supposed to be a charge gun. Problem is, it has one glaring defect. Did you see that? If you dash while holding the charge, it automatically shoots it. Whoa! This is worthless. Restart. Now that I have a better arsenal prepped, I can now examine Tigger's interesting physics. It felt off at first, but there was actually a pattern implemented into his programming that you could adapt to. He springs into the wall, bouncing him back, then would hop right to the edge. Good job, game devs. Of course, right when I give that compliment, the battle ends with the lazy dev slide. <sighs> 
Okay, but get this. The next one actually has a cool game mechanic. Ignore the lazy dev slide for a second here. And here. Sorry about that. I promise it gets good. All right, here's where things get interesting with the big bad wolf. He tiptoes to the side, then huffs, and he puffs, and he blows you into the spikes on the side of the stage. Amazing. Not only did they add a new stage element, the wolf's blowing technique is a unique concept for this game. You can't really tell that I'm dashing against the wind, but believe me, I am. I guess the animation doesn't trigger when too much is going on. See you later, Autumn Woods. Hello, Winter Mountain. This snowy path leads me into a duel who I believe to be Elphaba, the Wicked Witch of the West. Because she created the flying monkeys, just like this lady is doing right now. And they are quite annoying, because in order to protect myself, I have to take those little buggers out first before my bullets ever reach the witch. Making this bout drag on longer. One hot minute later, and now she decides to get her hands dirty, trying to inflict damage upon me with close range spells. The cat firing bullets was the real toughie here. Elphaba takes so long to initiate her final phase, just so she could laugh, that she was nearly dead by the time she summoned the undead after me. I'll take it. Now what are these upside down legs gonna do to me? And I can already tell you those falling dandelion seeds are going to be impossible to maneuver past. What in the world? Two Betty Boops? I was right about the hazard, but you guys know Betty Boop isn't public domain yet, right? Do you want to get sued? Because that's how you get sued. For those of you watching, you can see with your own eyes how obnoxious this encounter has been. Plus, they spit their teeth out like boomerangs and do the lazy dev slide together. I'm done here. What you got for me, Victor Frankenstein? A monster? Oh, skeletons. I don't remember that from the book. Ah, dang, I should have kept an eye out for his inventions, though. In the future, I made sure to dash out of there so I didn't get sawed in half. Ah, there he is. That's the flavor. For real? No lightning sound effects? Do you have any good surprises? Okay, I was not expecting you to do a Michael Jackson dance. You're just gonna stay over there now? Cool. What are you drinking, Doc? I am at a loss for words. What more can I say about this game that I have not? And how come so many end battles are the easiest part of the fights? Nothing will surprise me at this point. I need to go to the bathroom. I stand corrected. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I'd play a game where at the beginning of a match versus the Ice King that they would start things off by saying they need to go to the bathroom. That was real in-game audio. And by golly, look at that massive health bar for just the first phase. It's there for dramatic buildup featuring in the Hall of the Mountain King song while also speeding up the Ice King's lazy dev slide. I spent it up as well so you wouldn't have to be here all day. So subscribe in return, please. Then the Ice King takes a page out of the Big Bad Wolf's book by waltzing to each side of the stage, then blowing with all his might, trying to push me back into the pokey icy walls. Last, and certainly least, he creates birds similar to the witch's monkeys, causing the battle to go on even longer. Let's move on, please. <sighs> Almost to the top of the mountain. Who could be up there? Jolly old Saint Nick here. Santa Claus? What are you going to do to me? Turns out the real secret about Santa isn't that he's not real, because believe me, he is real. It's that he's as evil as they come. You'll just have to watch the rest for yourselves. A little bit of Christmas magic. Happy come on, if you help me. A little bit of Christmas magic. Maybe he's mentally ill, not evil. Nevertheless, the big man must be stopped. He ends our brawl by dropping me a multitude of presents, but the real gift from him was an effortless final phase. Let's get off this mountain peak. Back to the main map, leading us right into Mickey's origins, the Steamboat Willie. Actually, whoever made this game says the boss is Steamboat Willie. The beginning of the game even stated the mission is to destroy the captain of the riverboat, who they claim is Steamboat Willie. That is not 
That's Steamboat Willie. That's Pete. They made a game about Steamboat Willie, and they don't even know what it is. Anywho, we still don't get to fight him because we gotta go through a boss rush featuring Porky Pig, the Dancing Lizard with breasts, Zeus, Betty Boop, and then we finally get to face the true boss of this disastrous game, Pete, not Steamboat Willie. He only has one attack you see on screen now, and you literally can't duck under it. How dare I expect ducking to work? And that's it. There's nothing else to cover. I cheat my way to victory with no reward of seeing a death animation. And that's how I 100%ed Rubber Hose Rampage. Do not buy this game. Give the video a like instead to support the video and subscribe to the channel in return for me having to deal with this mess. You all have a good one. Thanks.